All right. Thanks, guys. Um, today we've got uh, Brandon Bell, uh, who is the CEO of the Edwardsville YMCA. Uh, he uh, became part of the, the YMCA uh, about a year ago, right? The Edwardsville. Yeah, the Edwardsville. Yeah. Uh, but he's been in, in uh, dealing with the YMCA for probably uh, 17, 18 years. And, uh, and what I've seen done an excellent job. So, uh, Brandon, come on. Thank you for having me, everybody. Let's see if I can, uh, there we go. Share the screen. All right, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm starting to think that I might be bad luck for your club because I was supposed to speak three weeks ago. It got canceled. I was here last week and we had sleep right in the middle of it. And now look at today. So I don't know if it's me, but uh, I hope you don't blame the weather on me. And uh, For some reason, the weather keeps picking on Thursdays on us. So uh, again, thanks for having me. My goal today is uh, to share a little bit about me, um, the why, and maybe some history and some current things that you might not know about the YMCA. Uh, so since I'm kind of new, I wanted to share a little bit about me. Uh, the Y is a absolute love of mine. I've been with the Y for over 18 years now here in Edwardsville for 10 months. Uh, very happy and honored to be part of the Edwardsville Y. I'll certainly talk a little bit more about that. Uh, prior to the Y, I did serve in the military. That is actually a picture of me in Kuwait with a uh, St. Louis Blues shirt. I'm a big hockey fan, so that's a uh, St. Louis Blues shirt all the way in Kuwait. Uh, I, I do love to ride motorcycles. Uh, that is a picture of me uh, with about seven individuals that we went on a motorcycle ride with a Cobra Club, Cobra Mustang Club. So it was a lot of fun in Arkansas. And then my wife and I are big, big dog lovers. So uh, as I mentioned, I've been with the Y for 18 years. Uh, people always want to know just a little bit about my military experience and I share quickly just a couple of quick things. Uh, one, everybody wants to know what it was like in Kuwait and Iraq. I spent 14 months in Iraq and the only thing I really talk about is the weather. And if you want to know what the weather's like, put yourself in an oven, shut the door, have somebody open it about every 15 minutes and throw a handful of sand in your face. And that's pretty much what the weather is like in Kuwait and Iraq. So, uh, but truthfully, um, met some of my best friends in the world. Uh, when they say brothers, that is the absolute truth. So those are, uh, that's a reunion of me and a group of guys that gets together every year as a kind of return home type of thing from Iraq. So uh, that means obviously a lot in my life. So I talked about me uh, working for the YMCA for 18 years now. Uh, I spent 10 years at the <clears throat> Belleville, Illinois YMCA. Uh, while I was doing that, I actually got my undergrad here at SIUE, so I lived in, S or in Edwardsville previously at one time, moved to Texas, then moved to Oklahoma. Uh, I actually met my wife while living here in Edwardsville. So my wife lived in Glen Carbon, I was living in Edwardsville, working for the Belleville Y, and that's where my wife and I met. Uh, so we've been married for just about 13 years now, be 13 years this summer. The uh, difference, we moved to Texas, to Oklahoma. We originally met here. And when we moved back from Oklahoma, the difference is we moved back with five kids. Uh, <laughs> if you know, goats are kids, all right? So that is actually a kid. We do not have children, uh, but we do have goats. So yes, I am the Edwardsville YMCA CEO <laughs> that moved from Oklahoma to your community and brought with him five goats 30 chickens and four dogs. So yes, that is me. Uh, that's my wife and I uh, with all of our animals in Oklahoma and they did make it to Illinois with us. So I wanna talk mainly today about the YMCA uh, and really talk about some things that you might not know about the Y. Uh, so I know most of you probably think of the Village People song, uh, if you think of that. Uh, I have done that song and dance live uh, and on video before. I will not be doing that today for you. Uh, so that is not part of the presentation. Some of you might think of us as a pool, a gym. Uh, hopefully some, somebody out there thinks of us as a nonprofit 
charitable Christian organization. I'm going to talk more about those things today. So a little bit of history about the YMCA as a whole. Uh, we, were, we started in 1844 in London, England by a gentleman named George Williams, primarily as a Bible study group. So that is our group. That is our history as a YMCA. Uh, basketball was invented at the YMCA. And if somebody's out there, no, James Naismith was the one who invented basketball. He was. He was actually a program director for the YMCA when he came up with the game of basketball. The original basketball score for sports fans out there was one to zero because it was a peach basket 12 feet high in the air. You made it once, game was over. Uh, that, that was, that's how they used to play basketball. So uh, volleyball, racquetball, and group swim lessons were all invented at the YMCA. Uh, Father's Day started at the YMCA in Spokane, Washington. We are the currently the largest child care provider in the United States. Uh, and if you're unaware, uh, so we have the two main buildings here in Edwardsville, the Niebuhr YMCA, previously the Essex Y. We have the, the nice big Meyer facility. Uh, we also run a, uh, a daycare or a preschool, as we call it, uh, in Glen Carbon. It has anywhere from about 60 to 100 kids, depending on, on the day, uh, from, for ages zero to five, from six in the morning to six in the evening. So that's another facility that we operate. And that goes with that largest child care provider. We are a nonprofit, volunteer led Christian organization. So, our highest ranking person in our local Y is actually our chief volunteer officer, basically, our board of directors chairman. Uh, in 2020, as a whole nationwide, we were the seventh largest United States charity. Uh, and before I get into this last one, being an independent organization, another little fun fact Does anybody out there know? what the YMCA supplied to soldiers on the front line in the World Wars. So we, we kind of hide this secret because of what happened because of today's world. So the Y actually supplied cigarettes to frontline soldiers back in the World Wars. So uh, yeah, that's a little known fact that we don't speak too much of today. So <laughs> uh, I want to particularly point out that we're independent organizations and how, how unique that is anymore. Uh, so Edwardsville, we should be extremely proud of our YMCA. It's not because they're great facilities. We have currently great staff. Uh, we've had a rich history of fantastic leaders at the YMCA here in Edwardsville, but we're an independent organization. And what that means is we are basically owned by this community. Uh, the only thing that we agree to as a YMCA, we don't, we don't get money from a national organization uh, so everything is done here local. The only thing that we agree to when we agree to be a YMCA is safety around water measures. So being safe, our pools are always guarded, things like that. Child abuse prevention measures, meaning all volunteers and staff have to go through child abuse prevention training yearly and background checks yearly. And the third thing is that every member of the YMCA is put through a sex offender screen. Uh, meaning if somebody's on the sex offender list, they cannot be a member of the YMCA. Those are the things that we agree to. Everything else, everything else is done locally. So our board of directors and our staff get to dictate, you know, what we do, how we do it, everything from pay to insurance to, to rates to what activities we run in the community. That is all locally driven. And that is so unique and important for a YMCA. So I, I like to point this out as well. So as we, we talk about history, so in the United States, uh, this is one of the first programs ran in the United States. And in 1890, it was the gospel wagon. And uh, yes, our jobs can be difficult today at the Y from time to time, but I always like to use this as an example. So their job back then was to go into bars and brothels and pull men out and basically teach them the Bible. And uh, I always like to think, about what was said and thrown at those guys as they were going into those places back in the 1800s, as they were trying to take the bottle out of someone's hand and give them a Bible. I could imagine that that was not an easy situation. Today at the Y, we focus in three primary areas. So this is stuff that we are doing here in Edwardsville. Uh, the first thing that we focus on is youth development. Uh, and these are statistics from last year uh, during a downed COVID year. So these are lower than normal just because of everything that we've been going through. But more than 1,500 kids learned to swim at the Y. 1,800 kids learned teamwork and sports. 
570 campers were able to participate in summer camp last year. We provided more than 3,000 hours of full day childcare. That's for ages zero to five. And 3,400 kids uh, learned a new skill in gymnastics. One of the biggest things that we're focusing on now is drowning prevention, safety around water. Uh, drowning is actually the fifth leading cause of accidental death in the United States for children. Uh, so we actually partnered with the city of Edwardsville recently, uh, and we will be hosting three safety around water days that will be completely free for the community uh, so that kids can come in and as they're going to go to their backyard pools or go to the creeks or the lakes, that they can at least have some semblance of how to be safe and how to help a friend if they're in. When we talk about healthy living, uh, which is our next cause, uh, we focus on a few different things. Yes, uh, the 3,600 uh, group fitness activities uh, that were available last year. So we had 3,600 group classes that somebody could have taken last year, 1,800 hours of coaching. Uh, and then we do programs like our Parkinson's program, which I'll talk briefly more about here in a few seconds. One of the things that I like to bring up whenever I talk about healthy living uh, because somebody might think, ah, oh, that, that's going to the gym. Uh, and that's really all it is. For us, it is so much more than that. Uh, and how many of you at one point heard the term adult onset diabetes? I'm sure most of you have. It is a term that we unfortunately do not hear anymore. And that is because it is no longer an adult syndrome. Uh, it is hitting our children uh, in mass capacity. Uh, and so this, these are some charts that I always like to share of why we are so invested in healthy living and not just a gym, some of the other programs that we do. So in 1990, this is a, a graph in 1990, you can see Illinois right there. We were in the 10 to 14% uh, obesity. That was our rate of obesity in our state. By 2000, we jumped to the greater than 20% for the state of Illinois. By 2010, we are in the 25 to 29%, and there is a new category of greater than 30%. By 2020, which you can't see on your graph, uh, it's over here to the right, uh, we are in the 30 to 35%, and there is a greater than 35% uh, chart for obesity. That is a true epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, even though it is slowly creeping upon us, unlike, you know, for instance, COVID or something like that. So there's just the chart comparisons. It is something that, that means a lot to us. Uh, I've done a lot of work with uh, youth, youth obesity programs, some, some national grants that I've worked with, uh, and it's just extremely valuable. The, first, the generation of children right now is the first generation to ever have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. Uh, and that is a concern that is primarily because of youth obesity. Uh, and I, I like to point this out as well. In 2020, Yes, you know, we all know COVID and I don't point this out to be, you know, any side or anything like that, but this is from the CDC. Uh, in 2020, the number one leading cause of death was preventable heart disease, followed by cancer. Uh, and I bring this up because those are two areas that our YMCA here in Edwardsville currently does programs directly for those two causes that I'll speak about briefly. Uh, the last thing that our main focus, we talked about youth development, healthy living. Third one is social responsibility. Uh, so we had over 180 families benefit from our financial assistance program. 228 volunteers helped fulfill our mission at the YMCA. And like I said, we are a volunteer led organization. So we have 13 community members from right here that basically all of our large decisions are passed through. They vote upon them. Uh, anything that, that we wanted to do as a why, the board of directors basically has that ultimate control for us. Some of the main programs we do under social responsibility right now, uh, you can't see the top of this, but this is our Parkinson's program. So we actually put together a free Parkinson's program uh, that involves our spin class that is free for, for anybody to come in and utilize. Uh, we also do a cardiac rehab program, which is that preventable heart disease that we talked about. And then we do an, a live and thrive cancer program, which is another program that we do for free, uh, primarily uh, for individuals with breast cancer. However, uh, we don't deny anybody. So anybody that's going through cancer uh, can be part of this program. And this is kind of the recap side of that. So how can you help us? Uh, primarily, join, join our why. 
Again, we're an independent Y. We don't get anything from a national organization. And that is so important and unique. Uh, before the pandemic, there were about 850 YMCA associations. Uh, Edwardsville, Illinois was one of those 850. We are now down to 750. So we had 100 Ys just in the last two years that either closed or had to merge with a big city Y like St. Louis. And it is so important for us as the Edwardsville Y to keep that sense of community and keep our Edwardsville Y, the Edwardsville Y. Uh, I, I work for large city Ys and I work for small independent Ys and that's what we would be considered a small independent Y. And it is so valuable to keep that sense of community. Uh, advocate for the Y. Share some things maybe that you didn't know about the Y. If you didn't know that we do a free Parkinson's program or a free cancer program, uh, you know, let people know that stuff. That's, that's very important for us and I want people to see us. Uh, if something comes up and, and you think you need a partner in the community, think of the Y. It does not hurt us to reach out. It can be anything. We have space. We have availability. Let us know. If we can help. We'll let you know. Uh, we would love to help, especially in emergency situations. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. Volunteer, be a youth sports coach, serve on our board of directors, help us fundraise. That's an important part of what we do as a nonprofit uh, or donate to the YMCA. And you can actually text the word donate to 618-565-9622. Uh, and you'll, pick, you'll be taken right to our fundraising portal. Uh, you can also give online. And there are some pamphlets and some donation forms uh, on, your, on your table if you wanna take those and share them with anybody. The pamphlets are extremely valuable. They, they talk about those programs like the Parkinson program, the cancer program, et cetera, uh, that we talked a little bit about today. And it also has all those numbers to review. That's about it. I left plenty of time for questions, I believe. Uh, I did bring an extra thing. I am sorry, I was here last week. It's not vodka. Uh, <laughs> I, I, we, we've talked about that as a program at the Y, but I think that goes against our core values. So. We have not gotten into the alcohol business, uh, but I did bring a couple of shirts. One of them is a uh, board shirt that we gave out last year. And the other one, we just got brand new fitness equipment at both of our uh, Niebuhr and uh, Meyer YMCAs. Uh, and it's from a company called True, uh, which is about as local as we could buy. Uh, so I have a t-shirt from that company as well. So I'd gladly entertain any questions that anybody might have. Yes. You mentioned the free programs, uh, Parkinson's or cancer. Is that free to members or free to the community? So those programs are free to the community. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, now they'll have to fill out waivers and things like that in case there's injury. But yes, it's free. <coughs> it does. Yes. Yeah. On the table, uh, the pamphlet does talk about those those programs, and again, those are free for anybody. Yes. One thing that, uh, especially in this community, we don't really have like city pool. We might talk about active work. Why well, have now no pool? So I mean, we do. I think yes. everybody knows that. I think it's fine. Yep. So if you haven't been to the Meyer facility to see everything it obviously has with gymnastics and skate and the big fitness center, uh, it does have an outdoor pool. And, and outdoor pools are hard to come by right now, and that's because pools are just frankly they're extremely expensive to operate. Uh, that is why you're seeing less and less of them, uh, is because they are extremely uh, expensive. It's just hard to to uh, you know, make a profit. Our YMCA is a net zero Y, meaning that our goal is to break even every year. Uh, our budget was was to lose a couple of hundred dollars this year. I mean, that, that's kind of where we are as a, as a Y. We're able to operate that, that outdoor pool as part of what we do. So thank you for bringing that up. Yes? Do you get money from the United Way? We do. Uh, it varies every year. So we have to go through the application process. Uh, we are currently a, a member of the St. Louis United Way organization, uh, and we, we do receive some funds from them. Uh, that really helps benefit our financial assistance program. It doesn't cover near, it doesn't even cover close to half of it, but it is a big assistance from them. So thank you. How do our facilities here at the chief uh, locations compare to the other YMCs that you've been a director of before? Yeah, so Meyer, uh, if, if Meyer is a very special YMCA. Uh, you are going to be hard pressed to find a YMCA anywhere near the size or the program areas that our Meyer YMCA has. Uh, our Niebuhr YMCA is a lot bigger than probably what you think too. From the outside, it doesn't look as big as it is, 
but because it's been added on to two or three times over the years, uh, it, it's, it's got a lot more room in it than what you might think. It's where all of our group exercise classes is where both of we have two pools, indoor pools at the Niebuhr YMCA. So that's pretty special. One's a warm water, one's a cool water. So the, having the two pools is unique. Meyer is extremely unique. Uh, really, whenever I get visitors from here uh, or come to visit me, they, they, the number one thing that they mentioned to me is how unique it is for a community our size to have two YMCA's that are supported by the community. That is, that is a rarity. A, a community our size typically would have one Y in it. Uh, and for us to have two is just spectacular. So our Y facilities are fantastic. Uh, I, I would venture to say that, you know, some updates are gonna need to be done here in the next five or 10 years, uh, with both of our facilities. We still are paying off the Meyer facility. So that's part of what we're doing right now. Uh, so from its original build and everybody still calls it the new YMCA, it's 18 years old. So it's not so new anymore, but that's what everybody calls and says, is that the new Y or the old Y? Well, I don't know what your definition of old and new is anymore, but uh, they are, we have great facilities. Uh, and once we can uh, eliminate the debt on a Meyer facility, we'll be in really good shape to do a lot of upgrades and things like that. Any other questions, sir? I saw in my comment on Shadow BC and things you want or what's interesting. I'm thinking about the Shadow BC. Yes, sir. So that's from just a question. Sure. That's who that's correct. Yes, that's, that's the United States. Yes. Yes. So I worked with a company in. Uh, whenever I was working in Oklahoma called Blue Zones, which is a, I was a partner of ours. They are a branch of, of United Healthcare basically. Uh, and what they do is they actually go into communities and uh, their, their number one job is to try to reverse the trend. Uh, so they'll do things like whenever you go to the restaurant, instead of you know your burger coming with fries as an automatic, it comes with a salad and you have to substitute because making the easy choice the right choice uh, and they've done a lot of work in that. And they they are starting to see some trends where they're at that they can start to reverse that a little bit. But it's it's not just newborns, it's really the generation of grade school kids right now um, that, that do not have a longer life expectancy than their parents. And that's the first time that's happened in our history. Yeah, and that's a that's a scary statistic when we start talking about the future of our kids. You know, we hire a lot of 16 year olds at the Y right now, and this doesn't really have anything to do with obesity, but you know, they're coming to us right now as 16 year olds who are lifeguarding a pool. Their last normal year of their life, they were 13 years old. I mean, they, they just don't understand some of the values that maybe you were taught when you were 14, 15, 16 to start leading up to your first job and to be a sophomore in high school. So it's, it's a little bit different right now. We'll see what, what that trend develops as well. Thank you everybody for having me. I'll be here afterward if you have any questions.